Hello, everybody. Welcome to Jumping in an Elevator, the podcast where I, Mike, from the award-winning YouTube channel Mike's Mike, I just talk. Really, that's the crux of it, right? I just talk words at you through this medium of a microphone and a camera. And I love that for us. Special welcome to McKenna. Thank you for being one of my top tier patrons. And you know what, McKenna? My hope for you is that you're not sweaty. I don't know what time zone you're in. I don't know what hemisphere. But all I know is I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. I'm in Western Australia and I'm sweating. And I've been sweating for days now. And for what? It's not even that hot. It's just sticky and I'm sick of it. So I hope you're not sweating, basically, or you can deal with your sweat. Fantastic. So this episode of the podcast is about something that I refer to a lot on my YouTube channel, but I've never discussed it. And we're discussing it today. And that is the Italian tour that I did in 2011. And I've got one of my BFFs from high school, Jacob, to come on with me and talk about it. And it's a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoy it. It's a long episode and make sure you look at the description to find Jacob's socials and follow him on Instagram and Twitter. Cool. So without further ado, enjoy the episode. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. (laughs) Everybody say hello to Mr. Jacob. Um, If you... (laughs) <laughs> we're, the, we're, we're not cutting already, anything. We're going to like leave this all in. Um, if you are like a vintage Mike's Mike stan, like way back 2016 vibes, you might have seen Jacob with me talking about Survivor. Oh T. God, yes. And it does pop up on the T on Twitter every now and then as well. It's like actually sick and twisted how some of the like old videos keep popping up for everyone and they're like oh, commenting wow. on it. Like, why is this popular? I'm like, I don't know. And the, um, the what was it? The sanitary pad? Oh, that's iconic, that though. That makes, like, a weekly... I get, like, a weekly tweet about that, and I'm like, sir, this is my professional account. <laughs> like, can we separate the two? <laughs> She's getting boosted by the algorithm, and I'm like, Miss YouTube, I've been putting out so much good content. Why are you pulling up shit from six years ago? I hate that bitch. Anyway, so, um, Jacob, I'm going to get you to tell me your three favourite TV shows just so, like, the girls can get, like, a sense of what, what to expect from you. <laughs> about who I am. Mm. <laughs> For, like, these three shows is, like, probably not the best... There's no particular Charge order. Person. Okay. Well, there is. So, <laughs> so number like obviously, survival would be number one. That's like mm. never missed an episode in what twenty years. So, fan behavior. So fan behavior. So survivor definitely number one. I would say like office number two. Bitch, I know you're lying. As you're like three office survivor. is number two because it is literally my comfort. It's my comfort show that I always just repeat. I know what you want me to say, and it is my number three. I would say number three, and I don't know why. Like, I can't justify. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to replace Offers with Lost. Yeah, I was like, it's Lost and Pretty Little Liars. And then Pretty Little Liars would be number three. No, but him trying to front what? for the audience. But for what? So I reckon, I literally think I messaged you, would have been a couple of months ago, and I was literally just like, am I just going to watch Pretty Little Liars over and over until the day I die? Like, where, when I think that's stop? your thing. I'm on, like, what's that movie where she just keeps living the day, Happy Death Day or Happy something? Happy Death that's Day. With Pretty Little Liars. And yes. I was like, I'm just going to continually put myself through this. Yes. Until the day I die. And for what? No, I think that, because that's literally, they're kind of my top shows as well. So I think that shows, like, how Actually, much, like, we are similar. Would Lost be in your... But Lost then, like, my top three. You also were the person that introduced me to The Office as well. Like, don't forget that. She's not in my top three. <laughs> for what? Like, not me talking about Office like it's some, like, niche indie <laughs> program. Like... <laughs> oh, my God, guys. Have you heard of The Office it's before? Like, inescapable. Like, there's this guy, like, Steve Carroll or something. Like, he's really funny. Not Stephen Carroll. <laughs> um, Stephen Carroll. Hi, sir. Shout out to Carroll. He does not deserve a hi, sir. Actually... <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. So, um, Jacob and I went to high school together. Also, this room is so obscenely hot. I can't even put into words, like, by the end of this, the sweat between my fingertips and this microphone, like, using this ever again. Because if you are, you should probably give me gloves. People are going to hear water dripping down the side of the mic. I can see a surgical mask over there. Is there <laughs> surgical gloves as well? I'm, like, looking at my disgusting. reflection. And we've been recording for, like... <clears throat> Okay. Barely three minutes, and I am obscenely sweating. Oh, is there any this too like something to fan yourself with? No, we must suffer for the art. So we went to high school together, <laughs> and this episode of the podcast is about oh the Italian tour that we went on ten years ago today. We're old as fuck. Is it a decade? Is this yes. like literally? How is this a decade in the making? I feel like the Italian tour because there's a lot of people you're saying how like always comment that they want the Italian tour yeah. content. It's somehow. 
the thing I've spoken about the most and the least in the last 10 years. It's like, I feel like I talk about it continually, yet have actually not spoken my truth at the same time. I'm loving how you're talking in riddles. I don't know. <laughs> it's a sign. What does that mean? Is the most I've spoken about for the least. <laughs> Why am I trying to blow this up so big? But I don't know how to explain it, but I literally feel like we've never actually properly no, we haven't. spoken about and accepted well, I- what's happening. Yet, like, but at the same time, it's the thing that we have literally spoken about the most. Yeah. Do you kind of get I've, I mean? I've hinted at it a bunch of times and it's kind of like, <clears throat> it's got a little following. The Italian to a story, and we've never done it properly, so but today is the day. Today's the day, and I'm so, fucking stressed because I'm like, am I allowed to swear on this? Yeah, yeah I don't care. Because um, I've lost my train of thought now. This I love that. That's so quirky. You um, did just down a latte, so I don't blame you. Um, so it was 2011, which was 10 years ago, wig, yeah. and we were in year 11. I loved that we were in the year that was the calendar. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, like that was, was something so I did new. used to, like, Recognize. I was like, people, like, bitch, what? How old am I? The fuck? And I'd just be like, it's 2009, I'm in year nine. Yeah, literally. And it's I would, so handy. I, would love that. I feel like it's something I used to say to people. They'd be like, how old are you? I'd be like, oh, like, yeah, like year 10, because like, it's 2010. And, and everyone'd like, be like, shut the fuck <laughs> up. And no one would care. They're it's because like, they're jealous. Not me, they're jealous. not me speaking in riddles my entire life. I'm like, they're like, what year are you in? I'm like, well, what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> and they'll just like slap you in the face and walk off. <laughs> like, sir, I've never met you. Like, <laughs> so, okay. So this is it. I'm stressed because I'm stressed. We're going to forget things, but sorry. Go I've on. got a little list, but we'll go through it. So I'm going to give a little disclaimer. Any, um, like, relevance to persons living or... I was going to say living or dead. Is anyone dead? I don't think anyone's died. The fact it's that we had to think well. about that. Um, and okay. if we are telling the stories and they're slightly off a little bit, we might embellish things slightly. Mm. No harm intended to anyone, obviously. But it was traumatic. We don't need to laugh. I was going to say, because we don't actually, like, f- dislike anyone. I don't like... Anyone. I don't... Oh, mm. Some of those bitches. I'm not going to actually... Why am I coming on here pretending I'm going to be nice? I was like, like yeah, why are you acting sorry. like you didn't want to, like, sorry. M-word everyone on that tour at the end? Sorry, I'm just a floater. Like, I was just a floater. I got along with everyone. No, it could not be me. <laughs> Fucking hell. All right, so... Could also not be further from the truth. I would say, like, the first thing that I can think of is us arriving to the airport. And the way I knew it was going to be traumatic is because one of our friends turned up with a glad wrap suitcase. <laughs> can I just say... Just to hop back before Not the hop, skip, jump, <laughs> Easter tease. Just to hop, skip, jump a couple months back. We also had absolutely no business being on this trip, which was mm-hmm. intended mm-hmm. for people studying Italian mm-hmm. or art. art. And, and we were studying which one of those? Neither. Neither. <laughs> we were the only two people that weren't studying either. Look, okay. My ticket in was that I won the Italian award three years in a row and the art award two years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I'm like, how do I back that up? What the fuck was my ticket then? I couldn't even like blackmail. Literally, my <laughs> my understanding of the Italian language was what it is now, which is like greetings. It was farewell, and like the words that are like the same in English, but just in like an accent. Oh, shout out to those words. Shout out to those words, like blue. Are you even sure? Blue. Is that Italian for blue? Blue, yeah. Are you sure? But there's like a zuro, which is also blue. Yeah, I was like, mm. but it's kind of like naso and stronzo. There's like two ways of saying some things. Is Wait, this, where is this coming from? I don't know. So anyway, so we, I can't remember what the context was, but we were like maybe planning to study those subjects, but then we couldn't because like. I just, I told the Italian teacher, I was like, bestie, listen, because mm. she was bestie. Like, let's yeah, not even front. We like, love the Italian teacher. Shout out to she who cannot be named. Shout out to two of the three teachers. You know who you are, the third mm, one? Mm. I'm sorry. Shout out to one out of three for me. It's a two out of three for me. It was two out of three for me before the trip, and then by the end of it, it was one out of three. Not the foreshadowing. And that's a real Look, it was, I was like, what's that word? Fucking silent. I was going to say agnostic. Agnostic? I was, like, isn't it Nostalgic? Agnostic? No, I was ambivalent. I was ambivalent to one of the three. Like, I liked two before, mm. but then the one that I was ambivalent to on the plane over to um, Dubai, because we had a stopover, yeah. he was marking papers and playing Yahtzee, and he got drunk, and I was sitting next to him and just, like, yelling fucking Yahtzee. Was that the way there or back? That was there. That was there, okay. Like, th- how was this ever going to be a good time? Okay, let's, like, the first fucking two hours of this trip... Involved us getting to the airport, someone having a glad wrap suitcase because his mum didn't want someone to put drugs in at a la Chappelle. And <laughs> shout then, out to Chappelle. Shout out to Chappelle. She's on Dancing with the Stars. That was like the first hour. And then we get on the plane and the teacher's like drunk yelling fucking Yahtzee next to me. The first place that we went to was Rome. Okay. Roma. Ciao Roma. Ciao Roma. <laughs> Salve. Salve Roma. What does that mean? Salve is like casual for hello. 
Oh, okay. So you say sal- I'd say salve to you because we're at a meeting. Oh my you, god, are you friends. fluent? Calm, calm. Hi, sir. <laughs> Italian, sir. You've retained the information. Um, so we get to Rome, and basically, the root of all trauma from Rome for me is we're in this tiny ass fucking hotel room because oh traveling in. Europe is expensive, uh, especially if like that many people, and we're students. Mm. <laughs> tea. <laughs> so we're trying to save that money, and we're in this like tiny room. It had four people in it, and then yeah. um, what I remember is one of the people in our room breaking the bed. Like the bed yeah. was giving hospital bed by literally just sitting on it. He like, sat he on was it, not, and it, like sandwiched. He was not doing anything ridiculous. He literally sat down and the bed broke. So the bed breaks while I'm in the fucking shower. Okay? I'm in the shower in Rome and the teacher comes into the room what? to fix the fucking bed while I'm in the shower. And, and I'm just like what is going on? And this is your one out of three teachers that you do not. This is the one with, teacher like, that I was like, could it not have been the other two? Literally. So thin fucking ice already. Mm. And that bathroom went through it. In this bathroom in mm. Rome, someone clogged the sink with washing powder. Was Why was he was? washing underwear and socks on the second That's right. day? He was what he was washing already because this is the same person with the glad wrapped suitcase which is important so what are you washing that's like literally what are you washing that requires so much powder that you clog the fucking sink like (laughs) it gave me pause that was the start of my like that's my villain origin story that that, bathroom i just remember like i was kind of like i remember you were so fucking mad about it i was angry as fuck i I was like i just want to brush my teeth bitch but i'm glad that it happened because the trauma made me funny but agree that you grew you grew so from that room. True, exactly. You checked in and out as two different people. That, like, honestly, you did not lie. <laughs> Another thing that happened in that bathroom is that this same person, um, he lost a pair of underwear and he said that the old nonnas who were working as the janitor janitorial staff stole it do you remember that i do not remember <laughs> that at all and like that because he like he he washed the stuff in the sink <clears throat> and then like hung it up somewhere and then we came back from wherever the fuck we were that's when i had a fight with him anyway oh so God. then we get back and the too stuff much. is missing and he like blames the staff for so stealing he thought the shit. that he's like, like why is this all, nonna stealing your bonds they were all like 55 plus no what one's stealing the calvin would she have like have from your, your yeah, whatever it was. And like, it turns out they just, like, ended up being, like, put somewhere else. They were probably, like, the half-washed ones before it got clogged. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, like... And this, I think it was around about the same period of time that I had, like, a... I want to say fight, but it was not a fight. It was, like, me just being a sassy little bitch. Like, I wasn't the type to just front up yeah. and just, like, so Rico they're... nasty smack a bitch. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. But, like, I was having a go at him because he... In my opinion, wasn't that excited to go to the art galleries? Oh, is that was that Roma as well? That was Roma. No, that was. Mm. Is this? I feel like that was. I'm mixing cities. Florence. I was gonna say Milan, perhaps. But anyway, you. It's still relevant. It's still relevant. It's the person that you literally, because he was bored the whole time. He's like, "Why are they making us do these things?" I did yeah. and you were like, "The art, the culture, the history." <laughs> the art. I feel like, and disclaimer, like I feel like back then as well, you were very, very um, careful. Uh, I, I, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not like, I'm getting my words twisted today. Also very, very sweaty. And mm. like, I feel like, I feel like, um, like I'm just trying to think because he was, I'm not like, not teacher's pet but you like Me? yeah i was he, teacher's pet yeah, oh okay that. okay i was trying to tread so carefully just no, then because no, 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 i was like this no, no. bitch about to boot me out of this podcast for even like a quarter through that makes sense yeah so like that you were very much like pet. we're going to the gallery because that's what we're doing and like let's just do it like yeah. you know yeah whereas he was like this is stupid like this is such a waste of time like we could be like running around like i, don't know, and I was like i'm around. sorry do you have a leonardo da vinci in your house in <laughs> perth <laughs> I feel like this particular gallery was not that interesting. No, it was not. And upon <clears> reflection, <throat> I popped off at the wrong gallery. Yeah. But I just needed to pop off, I yeah. think. Yeah. There was built up tension there. And I feel oh, like it was pent up. It was pentatonic. From our, what should be a three bed bedroom turning into a two bed bedroom. And I would say this is where the bad photos start. So there's one photo that I can think of that this bitch <clears throat> sitting next to me took a photo of me. Hunched over. Like, the first photo in your photo album was, like, me fucking hunched over the bed looking through my suitcase. And you put that on Facebook. 
private album though, surely. It was not private at the time. You t- wanted the likes. It was 2011 though. Different you- decade, different rules. <laughs> this is, wait, 2011, is that the same year that you posted the Lady Gaga music video trying to break the record for most comments on a Facebook post? I feel like that... Is not something I wanted to remember, but I feel like that was maybe yeah, probably the can same we not year. Talk about it does. That? Yeah. Can we not talk about that, please? I think it's 2011. You posted on Facebook. Things were never the same again. Um, so then, what else happened in Rome? Um, so Rome. I remember when we got there. We did like a double decker bus tour around the whole city, and that was just like, oh, like we're gonna get there. We're gonna want to see everything. Duh, duh, duh. But we were jet lagged. Mm. Like we were so unwell. It was my first international trip. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, for you. <laughs> I don't think it was mine. You're like, oh, we got a povo child yeah. in the chat. Here. Oh, did you not go on like family holiday? No, <laughs> I feel like it might. I feel no. I went to Europe with my family to the nine, so it wasn't even my first. Yeah, I seem to recall a picture of you at the French Open. I feel like I would have been one of those really annoying kids that would have been like, "Yeah, I've been here." Like the Coliseum's like down the road. Like I've seen it. Like I don't even have to look. Like I'm just on my phone. Like you know what I mean. Yeah, I feel oh like God, I would have been down the street bitch, before. But like, I feel like I was half that teacher's pet vibe as well, where it was like, "This is the itinerary. This is what we're doing." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I just remember being dizzy on that bus, that double decker bus, and I was like, "See, but I, I can't out. think bus in Italy without thinking about when I was like, I got severe um, heat stroke and food poisoning on a bus Probably in all. Italy in 2015 in Rome. So you've had Rome like, like, is yeah. the source of all my traumas, literally. And it's like, I feel like it has a lot to answer for. Like, have you ever spoken to like the mayor? No, but I've been to Rome, Rome. Tw- twice or three times. Twice. You've been thrice. thrice. You've been thrice, yeah. Maybe. And each time something bad happens. So yeah. what does that mean? Yeah, no, me as well. I will I've be returning. thrice and every single time. But like every time traumatic. I went, I got content. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if everything went smoothly, we would have nothing to talk about right now. Exactly. But I also remember there was a photo and it was like someone had like taken a picture and they put it on Facebook of like the bus and we're like, oh, like first day in Rome. But then you can just see in the background, you and me just looking so <laughs> troubled <laughs> on that bus. Like I literally, I think I was like pale as anything. Like I thought I was going to pass out and you're just like kind of looking around. Around, like this on. is i would say that's like a second instance of a shit fucking photo of me time for the third one this bitch again took a photo it was like a selfie we were kind of eating up the selfies i feel like i'm very attacked for these photos because i feel like i did not take all of them but i also feel like you can see your I just had no idea long about- fucking french fry arm taking the photo <laughs> and then i'm in the background walking up the stairs and for some reason i'm pinching the nipples of my shirt <laughs> And I'm like, got my tongue out and I, I look really exact, sweaty. I'm wearing a V-neck. I know the exact photo, really sweaty, or at least you can relate. Like 10 years on, what's changed? <laughs> Bitch, we're all sweaty right now. It was not a personal attack. It was an attack on that this was room. targeted. Sorry. Police. Sorry. Someone call the cops. <laughs> so <laughs> that photo, I was wearing a V-neck. I think that's probably the worst thing about that photo. You were wearing a V-neck? I wore V-necks. I don't- that's why I privated the album. It wasn't the sweaty mm-hmm. photos. It wasn't me being slightly overweight. It wasn't like anything else. It, it was, was kind of that though, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it was the V-necks. I feel like just for our mental health, we can't bring fashion into this because no. that just oh, that's a podcast of its own. Mm. It was like the Italy fashion. Like, that's a self-drag. The and I things think I'm we were wearing and I just look back at it and I'm like... I think describing is good enough. No one's going to see it. I'm not putting that fucking photo up. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, Absolutely no. fucking they, not. Those images are in the pits of hell in that camera. But room. I didn't delete them. No, they're just, I've just privatised them. And so me and you are actually the only people in the universe that have access to that. I know you're like fucking saving it for like my 50th. Like, <laughs> you're going to print it out and stick it on the wall. Ew, can you like just being 50? Triple exposure. We're halfway to 50. I don't think I'm going to, like, yeah. And considering like. You said I'm not going to make it to 50. <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't think I'm going to age. I think like, this is kind of like what we're going to look like for a while. I feel like we're going to be like good 50 year olds. Wait, you know? I do love that. Because our high school reunion is 10 year high school reunions next year and I'm planning on turning up with no wrinkles. Oh, well, speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, me too. But that was requires like Botox or something first. But anyway, are you going to go to the reunion? Oh, 100%. Mm. 100%. I'll go for you, though. Because like right. I haven't spoken to very many people from high school, but I feel like me in high school versus me now is completely different. Could you count the people on one hand that you still talk to from high school? Literally could, maybe three fingers. Could you count them on a peace sign? <laughs> 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 yes literally yes but i mean oh, high school that's a whole different fucking conversation i literally think about high school and i think about someone lighting their locker on fire and that's just like that's just that again another podcast of its own but we used to do fun things maybe we used to play hunger games like to get 
through maths. We would play like Hunger Games simulations and stuff. We used to like our classmates around us. We would like, do we used to write it out on paper? I feel like it was definitely a tangible. It was meant tangible. It was like, um, I probably still have them. (laughs) We we would like write out manually everyone in the class, everyone in our year group, and then use a random number generator to work out who dies. Who died first and like in what order and who killed them. And like, like, It's kind of sick and twisted, but also iconic. It was sick and twisted, but we also used to play and pardon me. And this links to Italy because I feel like we used to play the final destination game. We did it in Italy on those long bus. Final destination. We used to like hypothesize how this sounds so bad. We hypothesize how people in the tour group would die. Would die. And like, you had to come up with the most like extreme possible way. Yeah. And like then the one of the teachers played. joined yeah, in and I, I was love. obsessed with that. One, we, we, she was really creative. She said that yeah. one of our teachers from high school was going to die by falling on the meat slicer. In yes. The that's what I remember in the canteen. Yeah. Oh my God. That's iconic. Why do we remember that? Like literally, I think we lost. Like my life. memory is fucked, but like that is like so clear. Like imagine being like literally a teacher and then your students come up and like, oh miss, like we're just playing like a game where like you choose a person from this bus or like someone and from Choose how they die, and you choose how they die. She's like, "Oh, good boys!" Like, da, 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 da. and then just comes she up. came through prepared. She came through, and then literally came up with this whole thing, and she chose the teacher as well. I was like, we and she did it. not stutter. We get it. It's so like, it was like this preemptive interstaff know. drama. Like, <laughs> we don't living. bring that to the bus. We were fucking living. We were and hers living. was the best one. That was a good game, by the way. Like, that was so much really, fun. We bring that back. Like, probably worthy of us like being like a study for some sort of like mental health slash. Like, oh, one hundred percent. But there's something sick and twisted going on there. It got the game. It got us. Through it got us through 100. The you know the long bus rides. I think so. After Rome, the next thing I've got in here. I don't know if these are in order. Oh, can I just do one more thing on Rome? Like, remember us being like, okay, this is it. Like, we're in Italy. It's gonna be beautiful. We're gonna have like some of the best pasta in the world. Remember the first restaurant we went to, and they literally gave us like the pasta that tasted like it had come from like, the can, like the spaghetti in a can. I have like <laughs> memories of us going to McDonald's. Like, yeah, because the, the places day. they were taking us for dinner were like just. Disgusting and like mainstream like tourist places like we wanted that indie pasta <laughs> we i was like give me like a midnight alleyway pasta or give me nothing or give me mcdonald's which is what we chose like, you oh, being like God. i've been to italy before yeah. and if i don't get a back street no yeah. guys like you don't get it like you have to go down the back streets like i would know been here once <laughs> so like people watching and listening can you like imagine this situation for me dealing with that and then what comes next? So the next city that I've got on my list is Sorrento. Now, I would say for me, there's two things that immediately stand out. Oh, sorry. Why did my mind not go to these straight away? Okay. This is well, do you know what I'm going to talk I about? I know exactly what you're going to talk about. And this is all you. Like the Sorrento is your tale to tell. I don't even have to speak. Okay. I feel like, you know, one of them. So I'll say this one first. Okay. I have made a video about this on my YouTube channel about how I butt dialed my mum while on bumper cars in Sorrento and it was like 3 a.m. here and my mum thought I was getting kidnapped because she answered and I was like boom crash screaming when like the whole family gathered around the phone yeah like the phone rang and like they were trying to answer it and like my ass was just like hanging up and caboose <laughs> <laughs> and dialing and shit and then they tried to call me back and then like my caboose is just hanging up <laughs> <laughs> and for what like oh so then <laughs> like it the whole family was around the phone trying to work out what the fuck was going on. What the fuck was going and on, I, though? And then I checked my phone. I have, like, ten missed calls from my mum, and I'm like, oh, my God, what happened? Who died? So then I, like, call her, and they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, my God, my juicy caboose did it again. <laughs> <laughs> Just a recurring theme through, like, half your stories. It's like Exactly. The caboose is too juicy. juicy caboose. And then the other story, I have actually two more stories. So the second one was that the same person who clogged the sink and blamed the nonnas for stealing his underwear was claiming that this nearly 30-year-old woman who worked at the hotel was trying to ask him out. I don't remember that at all, but again, Sorrento was more like you really thrived. Mm-hmm. With your client. And then the third story was that Someone had a breakdown because they thought that the coffee in the tiramisu was going to keep them up I for like 48 hours. Remember the tiramisu. That's iconic though. And then he also was not, no, yeah, no, no, the coffee in the tiramisu, but then he goes, um, oh, I'm going to have trouble. No, 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 I think this is, I thought we're getting this story confused because he was like, I'm going to have trouble um, sleeping tonight. And we're like, what do you mean? He goes, oh, there's rum in tiramisu. Yes. And then literally one of these things yes. about like how alcohol keeps him awake. And I was like, I, was like, I don't think it's like So alcohol. is it one rule for everyone else that alcohol makes you tired and then you're like the antithesis of that? Like what makes you so special? And I literally specifically remember you being like, alcohol's a depressant. Like, <laughs> You literally shut it down that quickly. And I learned it that night. And like, I, I literally, I, lie? I recall that so well because I was like, I actually never really knew what like depressants and um, stimulants and stuff were. And yeah. you taught me that night. 
via a traumatic tiramisu encounter. And I feel like that was just kind of like a turning point for me. I was just like, oh my God. I'm just going to start snapping. Legit, because you were like, there is some bullshit happening on this tour. And also in Sorrento, people were, someone was hanging their dirty fucking underwear in the air vent. And for what? Because he was trying to get it dry, but I was like, you're putting it in a freezing so then, cold air conditioning. <laughs> like, so the air conditioner's on blowing air. He puts his like disgusting underwear in the air vent and it's blowing that into the room. And I don't want to sound like a bitch, but emphasis on disgusting we because started. that was... We suffered. Like, I don't think people understand how much we suffered. <laughs> Literally to the... Okay. Yeah, anyway. Do you have any more stories from Sorrento? Sorrento, no. I, I was going to say, I just remember wearing the most... Again, I promise I wouldn't bring fashion into this, but I remember wearing, like, the most hideous boardies and stuff. And I remember, like, someone going off on one of the kids being like, oh, I didn't realise your back knee was that bad. And I was <laughs> like, this is not okay. I was like, the shirtlessness led to so much trauma for so many people. Oh, no, genuinely. I don't think I... Did you take your shirt off you definitely didn't no right. way i don't think i took my shirt off in the whole of high school it's i feel like you literally thought you were so fat in high school for some reason i don't recall no. you looking any different to no. what you look like now in the nicest <laughs> possible way in like a nice way like this is what i That's remember this is what no, i remember you, you looking like the amount of chin Ooh. although i did come across your that photo of you holding all your art in like year nine and then i was like i just in my memory you know, like when you remember stories of people yeah. like back to like us before. playing tennis age 12 remember you looking like this for and some reason. simply not the case. But what have you I done to my brain? What do you do to people's brains and that's how they remember you? I was 50 centimetres tall. It was sick and twisted. But oh, I like, I remember specifically, I never took my shirt off after the U9 sports carnival after I nearly drowned. <laughs> and the teacher that cut his finger off saved me from the pool. Oh my God, the teacher that cut his finger off. But also, did you compete in other like... Division carnival? F? Or oh, yeah, okay. But what, with a shirt Fucking on? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's like that special I round of like... Not the special round. You know, like swimming yeah. lessons where you have to wear yeah. your clothes and swim and everyone's like, oh, they're up to that level because that's like it. Yes, and it's like swimming sneakers. Well, I can't remember anything else from Sorrento. Do you have any? Um, is Sorrento, I feel like Sorrento, we also went to the island of Capri. Capri was the move. Okay, because that was, that was part, like that was like a spin-off like, of Sorrento. Yeah, it was like... It's the same... Oh. Ooh. Miss Girlboss had something to say. It must be a man at your door. She hates men, hey? Apologies for that. Pepper hates men. And did, like, is she wrong for that? Like, you've taught her well. <laughs> <laughs> when you came to the door, she was like, who the fuck <laughs> is this? And for what? I was like, bitch, we know each other. True. Like, we go way back. I've True. been there since birth, Pepper. But then she was like, okay, fine, you can stay. Like, no offense, Pepper, but like, I saw this house before you did. Mm. Not the pick me energy. <laughs> so then Capri, I think was so much fun. All I can remember about that is that there was like some kind of iced coffee frappe situation that everyone was going ballistic for. And this was before my coffee era. I remember having severe anxiety about actually having to go off that boat into the smaller boat and enter the grotto because you had to like lay Not down to get in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. I hate the get ocean. Out. I hate the ocean. <laughs> I can't. No, get out. <laughs> I hate the ocean. And that was part of it. But that was, we will say that was probably the most fun day oh, on like a convent like conventionally fun day like it was a like, fun experience yeah. whereas i can think of other days that were fun because we were laughing at people exactly like in hindsight i'm mm. like was that the memory i want to have no i want to remember like some little kid getting yelled at for his acne on the beach in sorrento exactly, <laughs> like, exactly. i think mm. like at this point there wasn't any injuries to laugh at but they're coming Oh, they are en route. I think it's time to talk about Florence. Okay, let's move on to Florence. I feel like just comedy, like comedic value wise, Capri was just, we didn't get much, right? Like, it was just no, it was just day, fun. Like, so yeah. was it worth it if there was no trauma? Actually, I just had a flashback to us being on the little boat and I think we had shirts off and there's a picture of us really sunburnt yes. looking fucking Also, feral. that is where we took the photo where I'm like, ah. Like, that's, like, one of the worst photos yeah. of all actually came from Capri. Who do I think I am saying nothing comedic like, happened to For Capri. people that are listening and not watching, I'm talking a peace sign rotated 30 degrees. But, like, the hand, like, the wrist was kind of, like, 90 degrees as well. Like, the flick of the wrist, like... Look at the flick of the wrist. Like, the concave, concave. Like, my hand was literally, like, concave. Not concave, in. bitch. Get the protractor out. No, yeah, concave, like, lat. <laughs> You can't tell me that's not concave. The joints yeah. were working when you did that. Tongue out, Tongue like out Cardi B, also. like. So Florence, the things that I've got down here are the effectiveness list, which you will talk about. Someone breaking their arm on a Segway. Yes. Someone getting violently ill. Yes. Someone looking after the person on a Segway, like taking him to the hospital. Yep. And then the obscene phone bill. 
and then also the quarantine room. So let's go okay. one by one. Wow. I think we'll start with the segue. <laughs> but I feel like the segue is also a segue into the quarantine oh, room 100%. because 100%. Venn diagram have a lot to do with each other. But so I would I don't really remember the segue incident itself. We would have days where we could just like go and do whatever yeah. and then come back at night, which yeah. I'm like, that's so fucking insane to me now like yeah that they just let me go fucking crazy to freedom <laughs> balls <laughs> and like there's this group that went on a segway tour and I, why did they not invite me I would quirky yeah like i would have done it very quirky like. so quirky but then like if you think segway florence cobblestones you can kind of put two or two together and see what this relationship is for someone stacks it breaks their arm and just like the general like foot tra- traffic of florence i'm like where was the space to do this? Literally, anyway. it was packed. And was people are like zooming around and for what? You're 16. A disaster. You don't need to, to be on a Segway. Like, it was, yeah, like literally, like move on. like. And it was not cheap. And I'm like, where is the Segway fund? Like, like literally, remember they were trying to charge. I think I, I think we did get invited. And the reason we didn't do it, because I was like, oh, that sounds cool. They're like, it's 25 euros. And I was like, not nah, on my watch. I'm a walk. <laughs> like, <laughs> literally. <laughs> so then someone broke their arm and it was absolute scenes. And then one of the students ended up taking the kid to the hospital with the teacher. Yes, yeah. The kid comes back from the hospital with a broken arm. Everyone's like, well, that's crazy. It was kind of pick me energy. It was kind of fucking attention seeking though. I was kind of like, we did a lot of cool things this day and all the attention is going stayed left. Did you stack it? Or did you stack it? Literally. Like, was it intentional? Like, he literally fell and was kind of like looking around like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. We weren't there. <laughs> Bitch, I'm saying that's what he would have done because it was the most attention-seeking move of all. True, true, true. Who breaks so their arm on a sick way. he comes back and he's got his, like, arm in a fucking cast or whatever, like, blah, blah, blah. I was so him. off him. I was off it from there. Mm-hmm. I, was like, I was like, oh. He belonged in the quarantine room. Dun, dun. So Segway. the quarantine room. Okay. So this was very much ahead of its time. Someone got violently ill, like extreme illness. Do you remember who that was? Yes. Was it the person that came late? Because remember someone came late because of their viral illness. And they were like. And they were okay. They were viral and then they came to Italy. (laughs) (laughs) Like leave it out. Like don't bring that disease cross border. So then he was in like a room by himself, but then they were like, oh. We have a really sick kid and a kid with a broken arm. Let's just put them in the no, same like room. His germs had definitely spread. So remember, like, at one stage, there were probably four or five people in the quarantine room. Like, Yeah. So we're talking, like, four or five 16-year-old boys yeah. with, like, gastro and viruses and shit. And the kid with the broken <laughs> arm gets looped in there, too. <laughs> and I remember being and you were, like, literally, like, fucking fearful. Like, our glands would swell up in the morning. I'm like, we'd be sick. We're going to end up in, like, the quarantine room. Like, no, don't tell anyone I'm sick. Like, I was like, don't, don't, don't. I can't go in there. And it was, like, six people and one of them has a... He's not even sick. He like, had... But, to be fair, like... But he deserved it. <laughs> he deserved it just for, like, taking away the attention. But from, like, a objective point of view this poor guy with like a broken arm literally just got lumped into the quarantine room with five people with illnesses unknown like these are these are international illnesses so then now let's talk about the effectiveness rating but speaking of that there was one person that missed the effectiveness rating which we'll get to in a second while we're on illness why did they miss it because he wanted to, he knew we were going to an Italian restaurant for dinner and he wanted to go to Macca's and he knew everyone was sick. So he knew how believable it would be if he was sick. But then they were like, no, you'll be okay. Just come. And he was like, oh, hold on a second. Went to the toilet and literally was just like, blah, like, blah, <laughs> pretending to throw up so he could skip the Italian dinner to go get Macca's. And I messaged him and I was like, oh, like, I heard you. Like, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, Lord, I just wanted Macca's. And I was like. That is iconic. That is iconic. Like, bitch, you plucky. He was iconic. So shout out to Mr. McDonald's, you know who you are. He knows who he is. So then, okay, effectiveness rating, I think... This is the climax. Is there even fucking context to this? This is, like, literally the climax of this tour. Like, this is where all these other things that happen, like, you know, there's people, like, throwing up and shitting their pants and, like, sneezing and coughing and breaking arms around pants. us. The gastro kids in the quarantine room. Were they shitting? I didn't ask, but... Like, come on. <laughs> like, it's the quarantine room. No one no one knows what happens in there, but everyone knows what Door happens closed. in there. Door closed. Door oh. closed. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Um, anyway, so fucking disgusting. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. Okay, so where were we even going with this? <laughs> the effectiveness ranking. Okay, I don't even know what the segue with those two things was, but so the effectiveness rating. Oh, that's what I was saying. It's like all these like traumatic things happening around us, mm. and it's like, but whatever. Like, it's like. We get by, we get by. This is like, this is where it's slumped and oh. barely recovered for me. Like yeah. at this, after this, I was like, 
take me home. This was the point of no return for you. This was the point of no return. So let's say... This was the concave down. At this point, we're over halfway through the tour. Things are starting to get like a little bit heated. The teacher's are like, what the fuck are these kids doing? They're like getting all sassy. People are fighting. There's yeah. broken arms. There's gastro. There's a lot going on. <laughs> so then they decide... For a fun activity, mm. why don't we get them to order themselves in effectiveness? Like, literally. What the? F- Celebrity Big Brother could never with these social challenges. What like, is effectiveness? <laughs> like, and I feel like the question they gave us was so, like. Uh, vague? Yeah. Like, we didn't really know what we were doing. And. Like, if someone said for you and your friend group to order yourselves in order of effectiveness. Yeah. That's. Like, this is literally the challenges they do on Big Brother and stuff to create fires, where they're but, like, the house is too peaceful, we need these bitches to fight, let's make them rank each other based on their personalities. And the fuse like, it's horrible. was fucking lit. Yeah. And, like, this was going to explode, and then, ooh. Okay. So then yeah, we were kind of smart. We were like, we'll just go in the middle. Yeah, like, we, I think we even went towards the end. Like, we were like, well, whatever. Modest, but like, we, we knew that we were know, kind of low-key like, affected. Us, us, like, in the top half, like, no. Couldn't be me, no, but also put me like, there. Uh, <laughs> also, like, waiting for people to, like, push me, I'm like... They're like, maybe you should go. They're like, oh, are you sure? Okay. I know. Like, okay. So then people kept like kind of pushing, pushing us up us, this line. Of literally saying to us, no, you two go up, you two go up. Because to be fair, like we took part in everything. We would like, you know, we did to an We extent. didn't break any arms. We didn't, but like we were very peaceful people. Yeah. We didn't have gastro. Like other, as, as far as other people could see anyway. Yeah. Um, so it was like, yeah, cool. We, we kind of like made the effort to speak the language mm. while we were there. Mm-hmm. Like. Um, and there were some troubled people. Like, there were some whinges, people crying about home on, like, day oh. two. Like, oh, my God. Like, and this went Survivor. Like, we were eating good. We had roofs over our heads. Like, people were, like, crying, like, missing Like, we're families. enjoying the sights. We're just living our best lives. And then there's also people spending over $1,000 to call their mum to cry. <laughs> like, that kind of vibe, you know? <laughs> Literally. And there's people, like, trying to, like, stream the footy, like, watch the footy, like, back like, at is home. is it that And, serious? like, all shit like that. So there's people that – so I feel like, to be fair – we were absolute top seven minimum. Mm-hmm. But people were like, no, nah, go up, go up. So we're like, yep, cool, cool. But then obviously the who would have been number one? Fluent Italian speaker, the guy that missed Mr. because McDonald's. of the Mr. McDonald's. So we were like, Mr. okay, Mr. let's Mr. leave the gap here. Yeah. Shout out to Vanessa Amorosi. Yeah, so we like, is that her? Leave Mr. Mysterious. Is she the one that sings that the... So <laughs> yeah. That's Vanessa Carlton, bitch, okay. anyway. Okay, so we're at the front, but we put ourselves at, like, number two, number three. So I'm thinking, mm-hmm. like, maybe, like, you two, me three. Bitch, no. I would have put myself third. I didn't want to put myself oh in my the God, spotlight. Oh, God, I don't want to be number two. Seconds of first That was strategic, like, from me, because I was like, if this goes south, I don't want to be the number one target. But bitch, you literally left me hanging out to dry then, and you are mm-hmm. 100% correct. I was. I was number two. We're at the front of the line, and what does he say? Looks me dead in the fucking eye and goes, oh, you got you think you're number... Oh, okay, I'm getting this so bad. I want to get this right because mm. this is literally mm. just sprung such a fucking downward spiral that mm. some would say I've never recovered from. Mm-hmm. Looks me down the eye and goes, oh, you think you're at the top, do you? And in, like, a laughing voice, I was like, oh, no, 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 like, like Mr. McDonald's would be number one. Like, we don't even care. Like, da, da, da. Yeah. And he's just like, well, I can tell you you're nowhere near it. And the literally fucking collapse. The fucking collapse. I there literally was an just quake. Everyone <laughs> felt it. <laughs> I literally felt like Florence was quaking in that moment. Florence? I, oh, not me to try to think like Florence and the Machine, like relevance. Hello, Florence. The city was quaking. <laughs> yes, gotcha. Yeah. How when this story is literally about this fucking we're in Florence? Is your mind still go to Florence and the Machine? I don't know, but like at all times, I'm thinking about Florence <clears throat> and the Machine. Oh my god! Shout out Florence Welch. Shout out. <laughs> Oh my god! I can't even think I'm laughing while we're telling this story. Like it was trauma. So then, like you fucking flip a switch and like because I like how you say like you're kind of like mm, like like, kind of like sassy in the background. Like I'm literally like I went went, when I get in that mood. Hey, it's like I'm gonna hate you and you're gonna know about it. Yeah. And I fucking let him know about and my fate. And I kind of just stayed silent. Was I silent or was I silenced? I was fucking silenced. But anyway. Mm -hmm. And I just stood there for like a few minutes. And then the teachers go out and read their top five and bottom five. What was the reason? Because we were kind of like, okay, that was really dog by him. But like, I think that's like our terminology back then. Like that was yeah, really oh, dog. That's so that dog. was so dog. But like, anyway, it was like. Bro. Do we ever say bro? Absolutely Ew. fucking not. Like, bro? No. You would have said bro. 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 I don't think I could even imagine that word coming out of my mouth. Yeah, you can't even form that word. Like, bro. Like, bro. Bro. <laughs> anyway, so then we were like, fine. 
this is traumatic, but fine, whatever. whatever. Teacher's a bit woohoo. He's yeah. like, fine, whatever. They give us their top and five. And then they give us their top five. five. And it was like, I don't know how to word this, but it's who you would have expected. And it was the one, it's the teacher that I told you I liked going in, but didn't like going out. It was her little click of her favourites. And they were all like, oh, who cares? Like, does it even matter? And I'm like, and then their bottom five was like all the, like, the you know, smart, like, yeah, quiet kids. Quiet kids. And, like, like, I think the broken arm and gastro. Broken arm. Like, they literally just chose all the, the sick influenza. and injured. Didn't they? <laughs> the influenza bottom, influenza. Bottom five, effectiveness. And I was like, how effective can you be without retaining liquid? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. But the bottom five was horrible. Like, it was horrible. And it was the kids that were crying, calling their parents and stuff. Because they'd, like, you know, they would they were, like, actual fucking children. What an opportunity for them to be, like, but how good has this person been? Like, yeah. da, 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 and everyone be like, Like, you want to bump these people up? But no. But no, it was literally, and they like, were. Oh, you got a broken arm and gastro? And then they tried. You fucking suck. <laughs> and then they tried to do the, like, but you guys, are, like, you're turning into men. Like, you need to be able to take this kind of feedback. Like, da, da, da. I was like, I will never in my life receive criticism that was as harsh as what I just got from so, that man. I don't know if I'm making this up, but in my mind, I'm thinking you fucking run off into Florence. I, I didn't. Know. I didn't run off when the, after they finished it, I walked away. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't want to say run because that's dramatic as fuck. Like I didn't start sprinting. It's actually kind of weird. Like I definitely just turned mm. and just removed myself from the piazza. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's. But then also, so we, because it's like there was 30 of us, it was three teachers, they had us in groups. So like a teacher would, a have teacher would like 10 people. And my teacher was this guy. And then he pulls us around in a circle because they had to do serious damage control after this. Do you remember? Like that, because there was people crying, trying to go home. Like You were like, I'm going to call my I mum. Was, I was going. I and was she's going. going to call the prime minister and it's <laughs> over for you all. <laughs> Cancel my passport and get me home. Like I was, oh, I was ropeable like livid yeah green whatever like not I, green green like hulk no i'm thinking green like illness oh no no no, no. sorry yes, that was right. probably a bad mm. bad color to choose at this time. red with anger red with anger mm. um ready to just get the fuck out of there but so we were like in his group so during damage control they called us into our unique groups of three we weren't in the same group because you yeah. had the um had different yeah diff- different teacher and then he, they each gave us like a pep talk, being like, you know, we're a family here. We got a band together, like yeah. blah blah blah, all this stuff. Is that picture in your family? <laughs> As he has us in the circle and starts talking like that, I physically just like turned my back and just stood, remained in the circle, but just with my back turned, really thought I was doing something. Like- <laughs> and he was like, I, I know I've already, um, I know one at least one person in this circle already or already hates me, but I've got no doubt. I wonder who it is. I've got no doubt. We can already we can move past that. And I literally just turned my back and just stood there with like my back turned. That was horrible. And then. We got back to the hotel and then one person in our room who shall not be named tried to be like, you just got to move on. Just get over it. Like, stop bringing it up. And that, that's when I lost it. And I packed my suitcase and was ready. Like, I was ready. It's like, where's he going? And then do you remember why I, well, I wasn't actually going to leave, I don't think. But, like, I was threatening to quit. Like. Yeah. You're giving me, like, Trisha Paytas' big brother. Like, you were ready to leave. I was ready to go. Suitcase packed. Also, like. I'm glad you didn't go, though. you, You convinced me to stay. Not that I actually was going to go. This sounds so dramatic, like day 37 survivor. But like you being like, no. like You were about to like book that flight. <clears throat> you literally were just like, you're going to regret it. Like, don't let it ruin. You gave me like your own pep. The pep talk I needed was not from that teacher. It was from you. And I Who was the it. real teacher? Like <laughs> literally. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and yeah, that was literally the reason I remained in room that night. But then mm-hmm. did, cannot emphasize this enough, and we still had another two weeks or something left to go, did not speak one more word towards this teacher's direction. I'm trying to think, like, after Florence, there's also, like, Venice and Orvieto in there somewhere. I think from Venice, all I can remember is two things. First thing was that, for some reason, I was the bitch that was, was responsible for waking up everyone in the room. Yeah, with your bag i will literally never remember like 5 45 a.m like you just hear mm-hmm. like you with the zipper of your zip, bag but like bag. trying Bitch, to be quiet i zipped and locked my bag every night because i was like i don't trust you any of those bitches like people were just like sleeping with like their shit everywhere i'm like yeah locked key in my fucking like what's it called uh, b- bum the bum bag, bag. <laughs> and i slept with it on locked <laughs> 
But to be fair, like there were people on that tour getting like their underwear stolen and stuff. So like so it was true. like probably a smart move. So then like I was the one that would get up first and like have a shower and I'd set the alarm and then I'd wake everyone else. Bag up. though, literally you try to be quiet with that bag and it was you just like maybe I ate something. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, wake the fuck up. So, wake up, post. <laughs> so then one day my alarm, my alarm didn't go off. Yes. So I didn't wake up. So no one woke so no, up. And that was our, like, we didn't set alarms because you were our alarm. So it's, I knew yes. we were going to wake up. So then, like, up. they called the hotel room that we we're in and they're like, where the fuck are you? <laughs> and we're, I'm like, wake oh, up, who the fuck? What's happening? And then they're like, we're going to guard the land, which oh. is like Disneyland tees. And then, like, they're like, you have five minutes to get down. Traumatizing. Oh, so fucking crusty, dusty. Literally, I don't even think we showered. Like, what was no, that? No, 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 we no, no, literally no. It was 16 and sweaty. Like, we needed a fucking shower, yeah. especially On some the- of the people that were in our room. Oh. So then in terms of, like, Venice, the only other thing that I can remember... That was bad that day. That was... Is <laughs> you nearly causing the tour to miss the plane... Because you were getting tax-free slips on your expensive, frilly, suede satchel. Back track. I I don't know how to say this story without sounding like the most spoiled bitch on earth. But I was like, yeah, I had money left over from the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> like, because, yeah, we were like 16. We were working like tiny casual jobs. We were not affording European trips and spendings. No. My parents said to me, like, here's the Why money to do Give us back what you don't spend. So in my head, I was like, bitch, i got to spend this money. And then I was like, what do I need? And we all had to wear, and you wore it as well. Satchels. We had to wear satchels. They yeah. were disgusting. Like, I was wearing, like, a khaki diesel one from memory. Yeah. Um, and it was like, whatever. It was what it was. But mine snapped. Like, mine literally. Like you did. Snapped. Didn't we all? And he was like, time for a new satchel. Let me go to this place that sells expensive leather goods. <laughs> A get a suede one. That's and too I, fucking small to hold a book. But we were fucking like whoop, 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 whoop. Like we around were like the walking corners. around. We got lost. We were in like a maze. There like. was like signs on the wall saying plaza this way. And we're like, are we about to get kidnapped? We literally thought something was going to happen because we're like, we're following these arrows. It's a trap. Like yeah. this is what they want. But it turns out to not be a trap. It was. But then we go to the Philly Satchel store and you get a satchel that's Enough that you could get tax back at the airport. It was like, what, 350 euro, but it was also fucking tiny. It would fit a hat. Gucci, stop. shaking and quaking. It would fit a fucking hat and nothing else. Like that's the type of, that's the size we're talking here. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and for what? And then the guy said, oh, you got to, you can claim it back on tax and gave me the form. And I was like, whoop. And then we were also late getting back to wherever we were, whatever we had to go to dinner or whatever, exactly, because exactly. we had to whoop, whoop, whoop around Venice. And then can you finish this part? Because you remember this last part better me at the airport with the bag. I don't remember. Like I, the only thing I remember about the airport on the way back is that I had to go to a different queue, right. To get the tax. It was back. a whole fucking thing. And there was also the situation where two people had to fight one of them through a Coke <laughs> at the other person. And for what we tried to calm it down, we were like, "Don't react, don't react." And he just threw a fucking coke at him. At and for King. context, one of these people is the one that did the stolen underwear, and the other one is the one that broke something in the shower. No, but I was that's like, a conversation for another fucking. Time. I was gonna say I nearly touched on that with the Florence suitcase leaving thing, but I left. Something it. broke in the shower because of force. Yeah, let's just say that. So then I think that's kind of like all the main like situations that happened. Mm-hmm. The only other thing that I can remember is that. In Orvieto, there was this guy who lost his passport, like his bum bag in the church. And it turns out the police took the bum bag, stole all the money and gave him back the passport. And he was like, bitch, where's my money? And they were like, the fuck I know. And they stole it. (laughs) Just super quick one as well. I remember we had to do like an amazing race game, which I think was Mm. just for the people doing Italian, not art, where I think you fell into the art category. Mm -hmm. And like you had to go collect, like they had like hidden all these things around. You had to like go ask for the clue and then bring something back. And then like I thought the clue was like this little like toy chook thing at like this village store. And I was like, oh, there it is. And grabbed it and left the store. And the guy just fucking like grabbed me. And he's like, you pay, like you pay. And I was like, no, I was like, I'm just playing Amazing Race. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. And he's probably like, what are you saying? And he's like, just kidding. Like, gives me the clue. No, I'm joking. (laughs) That would have been so good. Wait, but we will kind of eat up Amazing Race. We, yeah, like I was with Bed Breaker in Amazing Race. We came last, but anyway. So you were with who? The Bed Breaker. Oh. The Bed Breaker, okay, the yeah. Sink Clogger, the Coke Thrower. The non blamer The non blamer the Suitcase Wrapper, the fucking- <laughs> The Art Disliker. <laughs> so then I think that is just kind of like 
a good summary. I think I went through all the points that I had. There's nothing else that kind of stands out. And I feel like it's going to be one of those things where it's like we're going to you, – you can never – there can never be enough time in the world to recap everything that happened there. But I think we've really encapsulated, like, the trauma. Yeah, 100%. Uh, the reason our mental health has deteriorated over mm-hmm. the last decade. Mm-hmm. But also, like, the origin of all our, like, funny vibes and everything. Yeah, like, literally. If I wasn't told to, like, line up in order of effectiveness 10 years ago, I don't think I'd have a YouTube channel. I don't, Do you think that's fair? Yeah, I think, yeah, and I think that also might have, like, sprung my, like, you know, obsession with, like, Big Brother UK and things like that because it's like... Would we be standing Gemma and Tiffany if that's, we weren't living a reality team? Exactly right, because it's like where, you know... It, has to it honestly makes you think so much. It's been, it was the tour of realising things. We really did realise a lot. We've realised a lot. And the, the last thing that I want to say before we wrap up is that the song of the tour was Till the World End Remix. Mm. Hundred percent. I actually remember being in one of the airports and they were letting you do Bluetooth, and we literally Bluetooth that and just fucking blasted, blasted that in Dubai. In, yeah, I was gonna say in Dubai. Shout out to Dubai, Shout and, the, to Dubai. and the toilets at Dubai Airport. Oh, do you remember how hot and steamy they were? Yeah, that was my first international toilet. But the water was the also water was like high, three centimeters off, like human flesh. Yeah, like, and I was like, "What is going on here?" I thought the toilet was broken. Steam, like yeah. it was steamy, not was, as steamy as us right so now. So, like the but, first three things that happened were the glad wrapped suitcase, yeah. the Yahtzee teacher, and the high steaming toilet seat. Where do we go from there? And I think it just kind of went downhill. We should have read the signs and just fucking got off of Dubai, jumped on, gone, gone gone somewhere else, or just went around Dubai. Just, we yeah. should have taken the signs. Shout out to Dubai. When Honestly, COVID's over and stuff. Where's that Dubai spawn? Weird. I see all those influencers going to Dubai. Where's my ticket? Bestie, hello. And Real Housewives. I feel like every yes. Real Housewives season has a Dubai trip. Yes, yes. That could be us. I'm very surprised Like you haven't done the Dubai. Like- I'm waiting for the promo. Okay. Yeah, I don't do anything for free anymore. Okay. okay. I think that brings us to the end of this episode. Sorry for all the external noise and the dog barking. I think it just adds to the chaotic ambulance. Say- ambulance? Ambulance. <laughs> But I mean, if you enjoyed this episode and you're watching on YouTube, feel free to leave a like, leave me a comment. And if you're listening, feel free to leave a review and follow. And do you want people to follow you anywhere? Oh, sure. <laughs> that I was like- so unconvinced. It was so unconvinced because like Mike's Mike out of context, shout out to Mike's Mike out of context, has like found me like on Twitter about like these old videos, but it's like, oh. I use my Twitter usually like professionally and it's like, it just- the Maybe don't tweet at him. When worlds collide. No, but the feel Instagram? Free. Feel free. You yeah, know, go for both, both um, Instagram. I'll put the Twitter. things in the description. Uh, yeah, Video at Jacob Waddell. Yeah, put it in the description because it's spelled weirdly. <laughs> He's quirky like that. Very but quirky. I mean, thank you for coming on the podcast. Oh my God, this has been like therapy for me. Like, if I feel like I need to pay for this. <laughs> like, this has been great. It's I giving like therapists from Pretty Little Lies that they all went my to. My mind just feels so at ease Refreshed. now. Like, there we go. But can I just quickly say, just before we sign it, like, remember what I said at the beginning? Like... Yeah. It's one of those things that, like, we talk about so much, yet yeah. we've never spoken about. And we've finally done it. And we've finally done it. Do you feel like we have... So you can all faced... leave me alone now. Now, like, this is inspiration. Like, anyone can face your traumas. Yeah. Keep asking questions. Hope you're all inspired. <laughs> Not the keep asking questions, bitch. We have to go. We gotta go. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and I'll see you all soon. Peace oh. out. Bye.